Students in an exam were asked to give the embryological basis for congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. It's quite a long word, but once you know the reason for this condition, I think that's the first step towards passing the exam. So coming here to check what a pyloric stenosis is. A pyloric stenosis is just simply, you see the pylorus is where the stomach is joining to the small intestine, right? So there should be a free passage here for food to be moving down into the small intestine. But if the muscles here are becoming large, and when something is becoming large, you see that that thing is becoming what hypertrophied, or there's hypertrophy. So the muscles are becoming large and thereby narrowing the passageway for food. That's why we said that what there is a blockage at the pylorus. So stenosis is same thing as blockage. So that's the first step towards understanding the question. So we said that they should give the embryological basis for congenital hypertrophied pyloric stenosis. That's simply what you are saying that if somebody was giving birth to with this type of condition, why did it happen? Okay, from the development from the development of the person, why did the condition happen? So trying to give embryological basis, usually you just give one, okay? So when you give one embryological base, you now say, okay, but other possible causes could be this, this, and this, right? So the most likely cause could be that is the number one. So when you give the number one, then you skip and say that, okay, but other possible causes could be the add number two and number three, okay? So that's how we do it. So first of all, let's define the condition. We said that congenital hypertrophied pyloric stenosis is a condition where the pyloric muscle is thickened, and this will lead to gastric outlet obstruction. Gastric outlet in the sense that, okay, this is a gastric. Gastric is your stomach, right? So things are supposed to move out. That's the outlet. So there's obstruction at the outlet, okay? So it's a little gastric or outlet, outlet obstruction. Then the possible basis, that's like when the child was developing, the possible abnormalities that would have caused this include maybe there was abnormal migration and differentiation of smooth muscles, right? So during fetal development, smooth muscles cells, they migrate to the pyloric region. So now in this congenital hypertrophied pyloric stenosis, these cells over proliferate and differentiate abnormally. And this will lead to what? An increase in size in that, that place, which is what? Hypertrophy. So when you give this first reason, it's very nice. But you see that both other possible causes could be uh, that probably maybe there was a disrupted neural innervation, right? We also say that the pyloric region normally receives innervation from the vagus nerve. So now in this congenital what? Hypertrophied pyloric stenosis, this innervation is disrupted, leading to an uncoordinated muscle contraction and hypertrophy, which is the second possible reason, right? So the third possible reason, it could be that there was an abnormal epithelial mesenchyme interaction, which is that the pyloric epithelium and mesenchyme, they interact to regulate muscle development. Now, in this type of condition, these interactions are disrupted, leading to an abnormal muscle growth, okay? So this could be a possible cause. And uh, with these three reasons, at least you are giving the embryological basis for this congenital what hypertrophy or hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. That's it.